Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we love variations on a theme. I'm your host, E, and today, we got promises to keep. This is going to be a discussion video, so there will be no edits beyond the intro. Today, I'm talking about my favorite Stephen King books to reread, books that I have read more than three times because... I want to go with that because every single one of his books I have read at least three times, so I... That was one of the things I went into this with, is like books that I keep coming back to over that three-time mark. Uh, this topic was requested by a viewer named Derek Jones. He's also a member of the channel, so thank you for that, Derek. Uh, it was also the inspiration for a video I did a couple weeks back, uh, books that I love to reread. So this time we're doing it again, but I am only talking about Stephen King's books. And because this is a discussion video, I want to see you guys down there in the comments filling up the doobly-doo with uh, all of your favorite Stephen King books to reread. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The first one, also... If you're a fan of the channel or a viewer for a, for a while, none of these books are going to be a surprise, except for maybe one or two. Um, we're going to start right off with the obvious ones. Uh, Revival, I have read at this point in time, I believe, five times. It could be more. Um, actually, no, it's six, because I did end up reading the uh, limited edition that I had. If, if you watched the live stream on Saturday, uh, you will have seen it, so I'm not going to pull it down again. If you haven't, you can go back and watch that. I do a complete uh, bookshelf tour of all of my Stephen King books. It's a super long video. But yeah, Revival is one of uh, King's most... It's the one of his darkest, especially because of the ending. But what I really enjoy rereading are the opening sections and then the sections when Jamie is on heroin, um, that, that whole, that whole sequence. I love it. Uh, of course there is a, I believe it's a traveling carnival that, that he's with at one point in time. Uh, and I enjoy stories like that, even though it's a small bit of the story, I do enjoy reading it. Um, and, Charlie Jacobs, every time I read it, Charlie Jacob, the character of Charlie Jacobs gets better and better. So yeah, uh, this is one of them. And this isn't like a top five or anything like that. In fact, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. A very odd number, which my OCD is probably going to hate me for. Let me put this over here. All right, next up, we have Cycle of the Werewolf. Uh, the, illustrated by the amazing legend uh, Bernie Wrightson. Uh, unfortunately, Bernie Wrightson is no longer with us, but his uh, but his artwork is man, and it is something to behold. It is absolutely gorgeous. And sometimes I, I ever since I was a kid, even before I read the book, uh, even before I had read any books, I remember flipping through this and just looking at the pictures. Uh, the most striking one is what I'm going to try and find here. It's the one that gave me nightmares forever because I had no idea what was going on uh, in in the picture, but it was so striking because it was a woman and uh, an, an animal, I guess you would say. Of course, it's an animal, but a werewolf is also a person. Anyways, uh, this is the most... This, this is the one that stuck with me the the most. Um, I remember seeing that as a kid and thinking in my little kid brain, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but uh, it, this one holds the place for technically the first Stephen King content I had ever witnessed, consumed, whatever, because I would just flip through this book as a kid. Uh, if you don't know, my mother had what I call the great book closet where she kept all of her John Saul, her Peter Straub, her Stephen King, her Dean Koontz. These were all quote-unquote adult books that she thought were too evil for her little baby boy to be reading, uh, but I ended up getting into them anyways and this is one of the books that i found uh, she would work a lot and my dad didn't pay a lot of attention to me when i was a kid uh, so i would just go in their room go in the closet and and look through the books uh even though i had you know no intention of reading them i didn't really get started reading hardcore until after nine or ten years old when i found the fear street books uh i did read the goosebumps stuff also but the but it was after the fear street stuff uh, and i was like i have to read everything by this author but i don't i don't read rl stein anymore uh but he was a very big part of my childhood uh but this i 
I give this credit for starting my obsession with dark uh, literature and, and horror in general. So, next up we have one that I, I'm, I quote constantly. Uh, if you watch any of my writing videos or the From a Desk series or any of that stuff, I'm always quoting this book. The first time I read it, I was a young caregiver. Uh, I, that's what I did before I hurt my back and the publishing stuff took off. Um, I'm, I don't want to say this was before I met Shell, so it had to be before uh, 2001, uh, before I turned 21. Uh, but I was sitting with a woman with dementia at the hospital. Um, I was being paid to to watch her because uh, the family couldn't. And I had just picked up on writing. And this is the exact copy that I picked up. Uh, it's probably, other than It and The Green Mile, uh, this is the, the oldest uh, Stephen King book that I bought personally. Uh, brand new, off of a wire rack. Uh, but anyways, uh, On Writing is, of course, Stephen King's memoir, uh, disguised as a book about writing. Uh, he does give some advice, but it's very loose stuff. Um, like on the topic of being talented, he, he says, uh, if you wrote something and someone gave you, and someone sent you a check for what you wrote and the check did not bounce, I consider you talented, uh, this book, if you're struggling with writing, if you're thinking, if you have imposter syndrome, if you're wondering what to do next, so on and so forth, King covers all that stuff by telling his own life story. And uh, one of the most, one of the things that stuck with me the most, other than the guy with green coming out of him, if you've read it, you know what I'm talking about, uh, is him talking about his toolbox. Basically, write what you know. All the stuff that you've experienced in your life, you're going to put into a toolbox, and then you're going to use it piecemeal throughout, you know. Uh, that's what writing what you know means, not writing about your life story, but taking those real-life instances, uh, the, those real-life experiences, and putting them in your fiction to make your fiction uh, more believable. Um, but yeah, on writing, I've read this at least 10 times. It's super short with insanely big font. It's like an old Bentley Little or Richard Lehman book. Uh, and it's like 200, yeah, it's 290 pages. You also have stuff, him editing his own work, uh, just stuff that he had laying around, you know, all the marks and scratches. Uh, this, that he also has, uh, editorial stuff from when he was doing, what was it? The, oh, I can't remember the, 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 uh, the newspaper that he wrote for, the college newspaper that he wrote for, was like Stevie's Garbage Cycle. It's, I don't know. It's some, something funny like that. Um, but the editorial marks that his uh, his professor taught, showed him, or the guy who was working for at the at the paper, uh, showed him that changed his the way he wrote forever. Uh, it's a very cool story. If you haven't read it because it's nonfiction, definitely get on that because it reads like fiction. Stephen King can just tell a story. He tells the hell out of a story, and that's why so many people love him because it's like sitting down and listening to an aged, aged storyteller tell you about these wonderful things. Uh, and the part with the green coming out of the guy... That's just little the little inflections that make Stephen King so special. It's like it, it comes out of nowhere. It's like boom. Now let's move on. I love that about him. Next up, we have of course Pet Cemetery, uh, second favorite Stephen King book of all time. Revival would be third. Um, this book, uh, I, I love the opening line. I'm going to read it verbatim because I love it so much. Uh, it is Lewis Creed who had lost his father at three and who had never known a grandfather, never expected to find a father as he entered his middle age. But that was exactly what happened. Although he called this man a friend, as a grown man must do when he finds the man who should have been his father relatively late in life. I love that. I had a, a very tense relationship with my father. He passed away in 2011, I believe. Last time I saw him was 2001. Uh, so that, that line especially resonates with me. The uh, And of course he's talking about a Judd. Um, if you've read the book, that's who he's talking about. Um, and this has, in my opinion, the best final line of any book ever written, conceived, or otherwise. Uh, it's an amazing final line, and it is perfection. It is super short line. It's a line of dialogue. And I don't... Is there a... I, think, I believe there is... Yeah. The, the thing that hits it, that hits so, so hard, is... I'm just I'm gonna go ahead and read it. If you haven't read it, it it says, "Darling, it said, 
it's the it said that does it for me and the darling what we do for our loved ones that that's pretty much what this book is about not being able to let go and to have that uh that term of endearment come out of the mouth of whatever the hell this thing is at the end of the book is absolutely it's it gives me shivers just thinking about it, and I'm stumbling on my words here because I love it so much. You guys know I always have more problems talking about things that I like than I do things that I don't like. I can always articulate what I don't like better. But anyways, there's a Pet Cemetery. Next up, you know what? It's it. I mean, I've read it 18 times. I'm looking forward to trying my 19th time after taking a couple years off of rereading it and instead rereading -re The Goldfinch uh, over and over and over again. The reason why... The reason how I can do this and still read other books is because I literally read this in, in small, bite-sized sections. There's only two chapters that I read in full. Like, I have to read the entire thing at one time. And that's Stanley Uris gets a phone call. And the uh, the section with Mrs. Kirsch. Uh, th that section of Bev's. Those two I read all in one go because they don't feel right if you break them up. But usually I only read three to five pages a night. Sometimes as sometimes as few as two pages. Um, but there are times when I forget that I have other books to read and I'm just reading this one. So that's why I stopped rereading it. Also, it got to a point where I knew every single beat of it. I could damn near uh, recite verbatim uh, the opening after the flood. Uh, I could... I could almost, I had it almost completely memorized. But anyways, uh, you know it, you you love it, I love it, everybody loves it. Anyways, uh, next up is a twofer. Um, these are my two favorite books in the series. So I'm just going to put them both up at the same time. And that is The Drawing of the Three and The Wastelands. Whereas The Wastelands is in my top five Stephen King books of all time as a standalone book. Uh, it is my favorite book in the series. This is a very close second. Um, but this is where the series really gets going and then you slam on the brakes for four but we're not going to talk about wizard and glass today um the the wastelands to me is perfection um i was watching a great undertaking uh it's a youtube channel here uh run by mr doyle i highly suggest that you go and check him out uh, his video about this book is astounding it's perfection i highly recommend you go and check it out um he he doesn't he does he, he's kind of like me in that i don't like when stephen king writes about sex uh, but, uh, he, he has an especially, uh, a bad time with the semen demon that, uh, Su that Susanna has to, uh, hate fuck as, as he puts. Um, and I, I got a kick out of that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't mind the scene. I can I understand why it's awkward and upsetting to some people. To me, I'm just going to let fiction be fiction. If King says that's what happened, that's what happened. Um, but the drawing of the three. Uh, I do, I'm going to be honest with you, I do not reread the whole thing every single time. I don't bother with the opening, I jump right to uh, Eddie's stuff, uh, and then I read all the way up until the pusher, and then I stop reading when I do reread these, um, because nothing in this book is as good as the shootout, uh, Detta Odetta, Susanna story, all that that's the meat and potatoes of this book and i've always called the gunslinger an extended prologue this book is a an extended character introduction so we use what is it four or five hundred pages of, yeah it's 463 pages in this edition and it's just introducing you to the characters that you know that are going to be going on this epic quest and in this book is when the quest really truly gets going because jake comes back all that good stuff um but yeah the, these two i love rereading them i've read them probably well like I said, with Drawing of the Three, not in full, but I've probably read them seven or eight times at this point. I, I've completely lost. I used to keep little cards. In fact, in this one, um, I have the card back here. It says, read 2004, March 1st to the 3rd. Uh, read 2008, August 10th through the 20th. I used to keep track in these, uh, and it's gotten so out of control with my rereads that I've forgotten to keep track of them. I'm going to put these back in order because, like I said, I'm OCD. Um, I'll put that up there. All right, next up uh, is Different Seasons. 
this is, is if you want to talk about short stories, I'd have to do a whole other uh I'd have to do a whole other series. So let me know down there. Uh, uh, short stories, I would have to do a whole other series. Let me know down there in the doobly-doo uh, whether or not you want me to go through and do this topic, my favorite short stories by King to reread. Or my sh favorite, maybe we do two episodes. Let me know down there if you want to see that one. But if I did, it, we'd be here for a while because there's at least 15 short stories. I was going through them like the jaunt uh uh, Poppy, Popsy, um, there's so, there's so many that I love to reread, Battleground, uh, so many, we could, we could be here forever, but this, I had to pick this one, this is of course Different Seasons, it is my favorite novella collection, it's also the first novella collection from Stephen King, and they are mostly, I, I would, I would say they're all can happen fiction, let me, let me make sure, before I'm thinking at pupil, I'm thinking Rita Hayworth, I'm thinking uh, the body. Yeah, well, the breathing method, it's on the fence whether or not there's something supernatural going on, but I'm pretty sure what happens in there is 100% possible. It has to do with the brain firing after death. But anyways, um, uh, my favorite story in here is the breathing method, and I've read that more than any other story in uh, any other novella in this collection. Um, I've read, I, I, it's funny because the body I've only read probably three times, but I've watched stand by me. This, of course, the movie tie-in cover I've, I've watched stand by me in my lifetime, probably 50, 60, maybe more times than that. Uh, in fact, I just got to re rewatching it once again with my uh, youngest kid. My oldest kid has seen it with me several times. Uh, but, uh, at pupil is probably the only one that I don't fanboy over. It's still good. I still give it 4.5 4 stars. Uh, but it's the only one that, you know, I skip when I go back. But I've still read it at least three times. Uh, this is absolutely classic, iconic collection from, uh, from Stephen King. Next up, and the last one on this list is a book, this is the very first Stephen King book that I read, again, Cycle of the Werewolf. I just looked at the pictures when I was younger. But I, my mom was a member of the Stephen King book club, and I've told this story numerous times, but I stole this out of the mailbox. Uh, and I read it over the course of three days. Nowadays, when I read it, it takes me a single day, same with on writing, to get through it. And that is Dolores Claiborne. Uh, there is something addictive about this book, and I don't know how he did it. Uh, it is relatively chunky. Um, it is not a 200-page book. It is 372 pages in this version, and the first edition hardcover is another 300 pages. Yeah, it's 304 pages, five pages, something like that. Uh, but this, anytime I start it, I have to finish it, and I don't know if it is a case of, once again, OCD, but uh, there's no chapters. There are some page breaks, but it's all written as one long interview told solely from the point of view of Dolores Claiborne, the main character. Uh, there, are, there are questions from other individuals, but there's no real dialogue. The questions are usually just Dolores responding to the person who's answering, who's asking the questions. Like, what do you mean by that, Mr. Man, or, or whatever? Uh, Kathy Bates, of course... Uh, J Jennifer Jason Lee, absolutely fantastic in the movie adaptation. It has one of the coolest one-shot scenes where she's looking, where Dolores is looking down into the well, and there's the eclipse happening behind her. It's an amazing scene. I love that movie. I've seen that movie dozens of times, also. But this one, th this one, I have reread more than any other of Stephen King's books, um, other than it. Uh, I think the last time I checked, I was up to 14. Uh, there was a time in my life where I would read it twice a year. Uh, at the beginning of the year, at the end of the year. I just love reading this book because it, once again, it feels like you're sitting down and you are listening to a, a experienced storyteller spin you a yarn right then and there. Especially if you read the book all in one go, it feels like that. But... That's all the time I have for you today. I would love to hear from you guys, especially you, Derek, especially you. The books that the Stephen King books that you love to reread the most. Uh, Derek, if you haven't reread any of his books, I completely understand. But if you have, I expect to hear from you because you asked for this one. But until next time, I'll hail the chair.